Hey everyone, Noe here. Today I'm going to be working on this guardhouse from Alcatraz. This is a picture that my friend Brittany supplied for me, and I just really love it. I thought it was very striking, very angular, and just overall kind of uh, majestic and rustic. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started on the pencil sketch here. And overall, I decided to go with the stairs as the initial part, like the, the top of the building and the stairs just because it gave me the, I feel like, the strongest vantage point to go off of. It's always easier when you can build out a few of the larger pieces. I had a really difficult time with these stairs too. Just a big challenge to get them all in the right place. I kept having to erase and I just, just it took me a little while to find my footing on this, so to speak. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Came out, I think, pretty close to what the original picture had and uh, of course trying to get the sign in there. So from here I decided to just kind of uh, build out from those stairs because I could get the uh, sidewalk here. And that, the whole sidewalk situation was interesting. It was just these little pieces of pavement coming off that sort of function like, um, like steps, like out into the main street. And then of course nightmare windows angular windows are just, it's really confusing to try to get the right positioning for those. But I, I really enjoyed the challenge. I thought there's just something fun about trying to get it pretty accurate. So many little lines, but I, I had a good reprieve with the tree here. It's just uh, nice to do something a little bit more organic instead of just getting these really straight lines or pretty close to straight lines. I had fun with the little details too with the windows. It's, it's always nice to be able to erase some of those pencil lines and just see just a clear sheet right behind. It just gives you an idea where the colors are going to get blocked in at. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this sketch. I think the picture is interesting because it kind of leads the eye around. So going down the street and then coming back up the building and the lines of the building kind of draw you back down to these stairs, which bring you right back down to the street. So it feels very circular. So that took me about three and a half hours just for that um, pencil sketch. Next up is when I actually get to the fun part, which is coloring, because coloring is just so much easier and less straining. I decided to go really exorbitant with the sky. I wanted to do something uh, sim similar technique as what I've done in some of my other pieces, which is using these really tightly spaced lines, or at least as tight as I can make it with the ruler. And I just had a very awkward position. I could only hold it with just one finger. Just take a look and see how long it takes me to just do two single lines. It's just every single line, I'm trying to be as close as I can to the edge, and then holding it down in I admit a very unsteady position just with this two finger so many times that I was trying to do it and I knocked my ruler just a little bit so then I had to reposition it and oh, it's just a real nightmare at times but the effect that it gives I really love this effect I love how these lines all these different blues clustered together it just feels really dynamic they feel like like these bolts of light I just really dig it. I, I love that particular technique. It's just so long. It just takes so long. Oh my god. Okay. So that's just like, all of these are just so sped up. And it's funny watching it back because I know it took me a long time, but wow. I even cut out some parts because it was just so many lines. Like, nobody wants to see me draw a thousand lines and that's basically what it feels like. I have wondered, I should really count how many lines I do one of these times just because I think it must be hundreds, thousands, thousands of little lines that I draw. But yeah, it took me three hours and nine minutes just to get the sky done. That's it's just, but wow, I just love how it looks. All these different shades of blue and just how they all come together. And, oh. It's great. And then of course, I gotta come back in with the blue marker and fill in the space a little bit. I just wanna make sure that the blue's a little bit heightened. I think it looks much, much better when it has kind of these variations in, in darkness. Sort of just 
makes the objects around it pop out more. And just, it's amazing how the smallest amount of this blue marker can really make every other part pop. It just brings a, a shadow around it and then everything is so bright next to it. I just really dig that look. And it's just, just adds a little bit of dimension, a little bit of depth. And I just want to give that as much depth as I can since I, it is all just lines, honestly. But there's a nice illusion to it, this sort of continuity of everything's blue. And then the building here, I had fun with this building. This was, this was another section I wanted to be really careful in because I wanted to leave a good amount of white space between the top of the building and where the uh, wall meets with the building. I wanted there to be a little light. I just recently learned about fauvism, which I'm still kind of getting to grips with. There's, it seems kind of uh, just like a very dynamic art style. And one of the things that I saw was that a lot of times these artists would bring their color right close to the line, but not like basically leaving a little space. So it's, you can see the, uh, the page underneath and it's sort of like, I kind of think of that as sort of like exposing the work. It's showing the work, it's showing what's been done. And just being able to show that, you know, this is just, these are just pigments, these are just colors. This is just, these are lines. None of this is real. I feel like it kind of shows that. And I like that about it. I feel like that's just an interesting idea. And my art, I guess, kind of flows in that direction anyways with bringing these colors close to the line but not actually touching it. I've done that in pieces before and I just hadn't really realized it before. So learning about that with uh, V, the gritty artist, was really rewarding and kind of gave me more purpose when I was doing this piece. It just let me take that idea of having this like kind of this school of thought of art of uh, how these colors interact with their with the lines around them, with the environment around them. I just found that fascinating. So I thought, okay, you know, maybe I can be mindful of that when I do my piece. I think that could be really interesting. And eh, of course, it's really satisfying to fill up these areas as well. If, if you uh, have ever enjoyed coloring things, I think there's definite satisfaction to being able to block those areas in. Welcome back. We're gonna finish this piece. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna build my dream sidewalk. you sharing about something really personal that is very relatable, but also not talked about enough. It's a brave and revolutionary act to talk about this stuff. I know it isn't something that people talk about being bullied, you know? Yeah. And it's like...
All right, thank you for joining me on this art journey uh, from beginning to end, alpha to omega, sketch to completed picture. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I have more landscapes coming, I'm sure, because what else do I have to do? It's 2020 and the world's on fire, so <laughs> everything's all good. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>